Um, I feel great, actually. I didn't really want the album to get pushed back to begin with, but we had to do that, obviously. And I was, you know, we've been sitting on this album since August. Well, we finished creating this album in August 2019. Then I had to get mixed and everything. But we, we've been waiting for a long time to release this. So for me, it was like the sooner the better. So I was happy that it got released then and uh, not at the end of July. Um, well, we had to stop touring midway through our tour around Europe and the UK with After the Burial and uh, Polar and Spirit Box. Um, Spirit Box. Um, and that was, yeah, that sucked. We obviously like, we, we lost a ton of, of like, you know, a ton financially because we couldn't play, the, you know, the planned shows that we were supposed to play. We had purchased all this merch to sell at the shows coming up and that was really hard. And then of course we came back and we were shoved into isolation. Um, and yeah, so it's just, it's just been a challenge, I guess, in general. And now, you know, we, we're not able to tour the album um, that we've just released, which is a real shame, but we're trucking along and we're trying to make the best of our, the downtime, so. Ah, well, you see, we wrote this album before, um, before coronavirus existed. So it was well and truly done um, before the first case of coronavirus um, hit, hit uh, humanity. So yeah, we're lucky for that. Um, so I think the lyrical inspiration probably came from, I'd say that the lyrical inspiration came just from our own experiences, our own sort of like battling our own inner demons. Also just, uh, it, you know, seeing things in, in perhaps other people that they can't see, like a real, really um, toxic behaviours and self-sabotaging and things like that. Um, so that was sort of like, yeah, that was sort of a lot of what inspired um, the lyrics of the album, I would say. I think that this album is far more diverse as far as sound goes um in comparison to worlds apart you know we did a lot of the tracking and the writing for worlds apart on our own um you know a lot of stuff was you know tracked tracked without a producer or you know, even a sound engineer um on worlds apart so yeah we were really on our own with that one but also you know it's been it's been three years since then or like it was two years since um when we wrote the album um how to survive a funeral so a lot changes in two years, you grow a lot in two years, and I think that our writing just in general and like the way we write as a team had evolved a lot. Then introducing Drew Falk's, uh, sorry, Drew Falk, and then also throwing in the fact that we were in a completely different country living in a studio and everything like that. All of that um, influenced our writing quite heavily, I think. Um, you just do it, I think. So you know, if it feels right, do it um, and don't force anything. So if you're forcing a soft part into a song that doesn't really need a soft part in it, then don't do it. But, you know, like example, Hollowed Heart didn't need or didn't work with having any, any type of melodic or um, stripped back sections in it. It's an angry, aggressive um, song. So we kept it like that. But, you know, if, if there's room for it or if you think that you want to experiment with the sound a bit, then just do it. So. That's how we sort of work our contrast in, I guess, into our music is just if it feels natural, it happens. Um, for me, I'm excited to play Erase Me and Bones live. Erase Me because that's my baby and uh, Bones because that is the sexiest riff I think Make Them Stuff has ever, um, ever produced and I'm excited to dance. Um, my favourite live moment with Make Them Stuff was probably my first ever festival which was Unify Festival. I couldn't hear myself because my in-ears were scarfed. Everything was a complete disaster, but it was like the most incredible experience of my life. Um, sort of just looking out at the crowd and going, wow, this is this is happening right now. Also, Jaya fell over on stage, which was more so what made that like a great show for me. I would say, don't hate me but Horizons by Parkway Drive, just because it was the first, um, I guess, more contemporary, and I say contemporary, it's like 10 years old, but it was the more, it was, it sort of like got me into this whole genre. Plus the fact that they had like, they were able to fuse um, 
I don't know, like they, they're really catchy songs. They create really catchy songs in that album. And I think that they just, yeah, like it was just this the album that sort of got me to appreciate metal a lot more compared to the metal that I perhaps listened to when I was like a teenager, which was, you know, Team of War gear and stuff like that. So um, this was like my introduction into more like the metalcore sort of um, realm of things. Spirit Box again, because they're legends. Um, probably Born of Osiris again, because they're a bunch of baby angels and I love them. Um, oh, this is hard because I love everyone so much. Um, definitely, definitely after the burial again, because we're like tour pals, like we always take each other on different tours. And you know what, if I can have this as a beer dream tour, then I'm just gonna throw Beyonce in there because that would be dope. Um, so we don't have a lot of plans because we can't have a lot of plans. Basically, coronavirus has kind of stuffed that up. Thanks, coronavirus, for that. Um, so yeah, no plans that I can really speak of because we're all trapped in WA. We don't even all live in the same state as each other. Nick lives over in Victoria. So we are a little bit limited as far as what we can do as a band, but hopefully next year we will be diving right back into touring and uh, yeah, doing our al album tour and stuff like that. So lots to look forward to for then. <laughs>